Hey there. So as I begin building the brain bugs of High Fleet Gengar, it came time to add a Maliceptor. But like the Biovore, I don't really care for the Maliceptor's aesthetic. Here's why. This kit here builds Zonethropes or Venomthropes. Medium-sized floaty brain bugs or floaty venom bugs. And this kit here builds a Maliceptor or a Toxicrine. A large-sized brain bug or a large-sized venom bug. Now what I dislike about the Venomthrope and Toxicrine is that it doesn't seem to be an evolution of that Thrope strain. The Maliceptor and Toxicrine instead seem to be a product of the Carnifex or perhaps the Exocrine. The floating nature and underdeveloped limbs, or lack of conventional limbs in the case of Venomthropes, gives them a very sinister quality, which is lost on their larger counterparts. And instead, like the Carnifex and Exocrine, the Maliceptor and Toxicrine take on a more bestial aesthetic, which is a shame. One of my favorite elements from the old Tyranid Codex was the structure and analysis chart. It's just pretty cool to conceptualize how the different Tyranid organisms are related to each other. But given the direction GW decided to go with the Maliceptor and Toxicrine's design, it kinda bums me out that there isn't a clear evolutionary throughline between these two kits and the pairing of the units it offers. And I'm well aware Tyranids aren't exactly Pokémon, but I like the natural throughline of such a paradigm. And I pose it as a natural design route because it seems to be quite common. I mean, we got this in Space Marines for the Firstborn range with Rhinos, Land Raiders, and Spartans. And in the Primaris range, we can see similar with the Gladiator, Repulsor, and Astraeus. The new Kratos tank in 30k does the same with Sakarans and Fellblades. And in the Eldar, we can see this with Wraithblades, Wraith Lords, and Wraith Knights. The list goes on. Generally speaking, things seem to escalate in the direction they are already headed and not often take hard turns in a different direction, as is the case with the Thropes to the Maliceptor or Toxicrine. And that's why I am not all that fond of the Maliceptor. Though, as you could probably guess, I do like the concept of a large psychic space bug. And so the goal of the conversion is to modify the Maliceptor to make it more sinister and make it look more like a natural evolution of the Zonethrope. Here's what I ended up with. And I'm pretty pleased with the result. I've seen some conversions of Maliceptors on the interwebs that are oriented on their tail sitting upright like a Zonethrope. But after getting my hands on the kit and mocking it up, I decided against it. The reason being, while I dislike the direction GW took the Maliceptor and Toxicrine, I still wanted my conversion to respect the capabilities of what a Maliceptor is in lore. Mainly that it needs to be able to use monster-sized scything talons. And the upright build felt a bit awkward to me for that purpose. And so I thought, what if instead of a vertical orientation, it floats around horizontally, sort of like the Sentinels in the Matrix? For one, it better aligns with the intended construction of the model. And for two, it just happens to coincide with the parts I have lying about. Recently, I finished a Sporocyst for High Fleet Gengar. And if you build this kit as a Sporocyst, you're left over with the Mucolid Spore. A model which I appreciate for its sinister alien floaty vibe, but one I don't find to be all that practical to field. And I much prefer Spore Mines anyways because of the interplay with Biovores. So as for the parts I used, as mentioned, it was a Mucolid Spore, the Maliceptor Kit, obviously, a few small Adrenal Glands, two Venomthrope Whip Arms, and some green stuff. And here's a brief overview of the build process. The primary modification of the model is attaching the Mucolid Spore bottom to the Maliceptor tail. I cut the Maliceptor tail in between the third and fourth plates, and built the model as instructed up to this point. From here, it's time to glue the Mucolid Spore bottom to the cut area. You want a strong connection for this, so ensure there is a good surface-to-surface -surface connection based on how the two parts are cut. Next is to add the primary chest tentacle. I'm not sure what to call it, so I'll go with a chesticle. This is a spare part that only has a function in the original kit if you build it as a Tyrannocyte. Again, since I built the Sporocyst, I had the components to build the Mucolid Spore and this spare part. All of that said, this chesticle is going to be one of the primary supports of the model. So I pinned it in place and added some plastic glue to the touching surfaces for good measure. Once the chesticle is in place, we can add the tentacle arms. This is done by using the Maliceptor arms, cutting them just below the deltoid, and connecting them to the whip arms. These two were pinned in place as it will make blending the green stuff far easier. I also realized during this step I glued the wrong sternum plate, so I swapped it out here for the more carapace looking one. Moving on to the front scything talons. I actually opted for using Hive Tyrant scything talons instead, mostly because they are smaller, 
Only slightly, but I prefer brain bugs to have smaller scything talons where possible. And with the talons in place, the build is nearly done. Basically all that is left is the green stuff stage, which will be filling gaps and accessorizing the bottom of the torso. The goal I had in mind here was to add parts which would help sell the idea that this monster is capable of floating, and so the plan is to attach the toxicrine brain caps and the mucolid spore stacks along either side of the chesticle like so. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of my sculpting work. This is because, well, I didn't really have a plan and treated it more like an organic process. Well, I guess I had some idea, but it was definitely solidified in the moment once I could see how things were looking as I went along. The best thing I could say is that the primary goal was to blend the green stuff to the plastic parts as seamlessly as my current skill level would allow, while following the existing anatomy where possible. And here is the model done and ready for painting. You can also see that during the green stuff stage, I added some venom thrope whip arms to the lower body, where the maliceptor legs would be. I just felt the model needed some detail in that area. As for affixing this model to the base, pins were added through the chesticle and the rear right arm tentacle which is touching the ground. The chesticle was then reinforced with an infestation node. Then superglue was used to create more reinforcement points on the front right scything talon and the rear left tentacle that is touching the cork rock. As for how it turned out, I definitely like it. To me, it feels more in line with the zone throp. And all the more sinister. But feel free to let me know what you think. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching this High Fleet Gengar hobby vlog for this custom Maliceptor build. And as always, a special thanks to my patrons, Julius Maximus, as well as the others who help keep the dream alive. So, if you like this video, there is a like button. And if you want to help my channel grow, there is a subscribe button. There is also a bell button and a share button. So press the buttons you want to press. And with that, I'll hope to see you guys in the next one.